Hi, and welcome back to Ivy English. I'm Karen, and I'm Chris Gorski. Today is July twenty seventh, and we're going to hear part two of the article. This really crappy article that we started <laughs> yesterday. No, the article was about crap. It's a very good article. It wasn't crappy, but it's about crap. It's entitled "Toilet Trivia: Interesting Facts About Toilets and Going to the Bathroom." So, Karen, I got a question for you.、Mm. Someone uses the bathroom and they they just blow it up. They make it terrible. You open the door and you can say one word. What's the word you say? P uses. That's exactly right. P U. <laughs> P uses. <laughs> That's an intensifier. <laughs> P U. Is one of these words we all say that means oh it's very smelly, but pu actually has very ancient origins. It's actually one of the one of those Indo-European words that go back way, 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 way back, and we still say it. It only exists today in words like putrefy and putrid. But that pu in putrid and putrefy just means pu means it smells. I think it just comes from onomatopoeia like pu. You're just opening your lips and letting out a breath. Is this, this is awful? I can't it's breathe. It's a really interesting word that stayed with us for thousands of years. It must mean something to us. So I agreed with the pu part, but I have an intensifier form that means if it stinks really bad, you add zus at the end. Like Jesus? P- <laughs> no, it's sort of. I、oh. guess pu zus. P uses it's even stronger than pu. Do you ever use that or not? I've never heard of that. I thought it was something you made. It's like. P U plus Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wonder if it's a Minnesota thing or a Midwestern thing. I don't know. I've never heard this. It's very common where I come from. P uses it's something my father said a lot. So I'll have to look into that one. So anyway, we're going on to part two now, talking about things about toilets. Yesterday we talked about the early days, how people went to the toilet, and what kinds of things they built for people to use the toilet. And then we got to flush toilets, which we use now. And we've got three paragraphs in part two today, and let's get started. With the evolution of the toilet, there have been two different paths: one of the sitting kind, and the other of the squatting type. The former is common in the Western world, particularly in North America and the United Kingdom, where squat toilets are rare. At the same time, the latter is often seen in many parts of Asia and Africa, and even some regions of Southern and Eastern Europe. So the question arises. Which is the more effective, healthier way to go to the bathroom? There has been much debate and research on this matter. Interestingly, while many people believe sitting toilets to be more modern and an improvement on squat toilets, there is a strong case to be made that squat toilets are the better choice. In one experiment, an Israeli researcher. Measured the average time it took subjects to empty their bowels using sitting toilets versus squat toilets. It was found that the average time it took while squatting, 51 seconds, was shorter than what was needed on a 42 centimeter high sitting toilet by 79 seconds. Studies have also determined that people experienced less abdominal strain and discomfort while squatting. The research findings clearly indicate that there are benefits to squatting. This is likely due to the fact that the angle created when a person squats allows for a straighter, more direct path for waste to travel from the rectum to the anus. Some even recommend that people who prefer sitting toilets use a stool or some other type of modification to place their feet on to make the angle closer to that of a squat position. So we're really getting down to the nitty gritty here.、Uh, we'll. We'll talk more about it when we get to that paragraph. Let's go back to the beginning. With the evolution of the toilet, there have been two different paths: one of the sitting kind and the other of the squatting type. Dude, I don't like a squatting toilet. I'm just gonna plant my flag here. I'm just gonna tell you, I've used it once. I tried it. I don't have great ankle flexibility for for getting down low, but sitting on the toilet and reading is a wonderful time. I'm not convinced. Like. Let's put it this way: Everybody that I've ever heard say, "Like, dude, squatting toilets are so much better." Every one of those people, when I've gone to their house, they don't have a squatting toilet. And one of our editors just said that too. You know, a lot of Taiwanese say they prefer squat toilets, but they all have sit-down toilets at home. They like squat toilets for public toilets because you don't have to actually touch the ceramic, the porcelain. Okay, I can see that, but to me, it's like put your money where your mouth is. If, yeah. If ceramic, to- if squatting toilets are so much better, why does everybody have a sitting toilet? That's right. And now they also usually provide you with 
alcohol, and you can use toilet paper to wipe the seat, and that makes it quite clean and safe. Now, I agree with you totally, and I'm guessing most Westerners like us. It doesn't mean white people、It、includes all people who grew up in the West, whatever your color is. Probably will agree with us most of the time because we do not have the cultural habit of stooping since we are children. Yeah. So if we try to learn how to squat late in life, it takes a long time to develop that flexibility. Some of us never get it till we die. We never get it. I, I also wondered about older people. Mobility becomes an issue, and I don't know how low and how long you can squat. As you age, I can give you some information on that because I have a very aged mother-in-law. Of course, we always had to use sit-down toilets. She was not that strong anymore. Any older person, anybody who has like knee trouble, yeah, anybody who has any kind of a disability,、Hips. there are so many people who fall in that category who need a sit-down toilet. Fortunately, most bathrooms provide one, but often there'll be. Eight squat toilets and one sit-down toilet, so that's a, not convenient for me as a Westerner. I can use squat toilets, not crazy about them, but they actually changed. They remodeled the toilets in my building at Tai Da some years ago, and I thought, oh, finally we'll get a bunch of sit-down toilets. They did have some, but I thought maybe we'll get more. And it ended up all of them were squat toilets, but one. So I asked my students. I said, "What do you prefer?" I thought they would support me. Almost everybody said. We prefer squat toilets.、That's、I go,、funny. why? They said because it's cleaner. <laughs> and I go, man, you know, if you have a, like a long poop, you have to sit there and poop a long time. I mean, a lot of people just don't want to squat that long. And so I just made sure that I knew where the sit down toilets were because I prefer them. I just, you know, like you, it's it's not something I enjoy. So you're going to find that with Westerners. I was surprised when I went to France. In the train stations or the metro stations, they often have squat toilets. That was kind of a surprise. And one other story: when I was in Campfire Girls, when I was maybe what ten years old, our leader had gone to Japan, and she came back and told about her trip. And she says, "You know, the toilets there are very special. You know, you pull down your pants, you squat down, and just go into this hole." That was something totally new for us at about age ten or twelve. <laughs> no, thank you. So I was trying to imagine our leader, who was a very proper, well-mannered woman, sitting down and pooping into a hole in Japan. I, it was really hard to imagine at the time. We're going on to the next sentence. The former is common in the Western world, particularly in North America and the United Kingdom, where squat toilets are rare. And I think Chris and I have now just borne witness to this. <laughs>、okay. I, I had never seen a squat toilet before I came to Taiwan. I had heard of them. I had no idea what they looked like. Now you certainly know. <laughs> At the same time, the latter is often seen in many parts of Asia and Africa, and even some regions of southern and eastern Europe. And I just mentioned a minute ago that they are quite common even now in public toilets in France, like at train stations. So the question arises: Which is the more effective, healthier way to go to the bathroom? Now, here we're thinking: Now, is really one better than the other? Chris and I believe that sit-down toilets are better because they're definitely more comfortable. But in for other reasons, might squat toilets be better? There has been much debate and research on this matter, and that's what the rest of the article is really about. All right, and let's take a look at paragraph two here. Interestingly, while many people believe sitting toilets to be more modern and an improvement on squat toilets. There is a strong case to be made that squat toilets are the better choice. Now they are going to have to do some convincing of Chris and me. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to ask my students the question you asked. I wonder which ones they prefer. Do they prefer squat or sit down toilets? Now I'm curious. I was shocked when I heard it, but then I just adjusted that in my idea of how Taiwan works. All right. So the way I look at it in modern in in the newer MRT stations and the remodeled MRT stations. There are more sit toilets and squat toilets.、Not、There、always. are still、Not、squat、always. toilets in the older ones that haven't been remodeled. In the Taipei Metro, you're going to see more.、Uh, maybe for men, at least, this is also an important fact. <laughs> There are sit down toilets, and then usually one or two squatting toilets. I can tell you at Nangang Station, the Nangang Exhibition Center, there are many more squats, but those haven't been remodeled. But actually, like in Xindian, they've remodeled recently, and they do have a number of sit-down toilets. But squat toilets are usually still quite numerous and popular. More than a sit-down. 
Sometimes. I wonder if this is a male female thing too. No, I don't think so. Okay. I really doubt it. All right. All right. Well, we're going to we're going I'm going to pay more attention to this cuz I'm pretty convinced there's more sit downs. All right. We're going to pay attention. You to may this. be right. Okay. okay. And recently when they've remodeled, maybe because they're trying to internationalize. Yeah. So that's worth worth looking into. Let's continue. In one experiment, an Israeli researcher measured the average time it took subjects to empty their bowels using sitting toilets versus squat toilets. Out. Tell me, describe the picture you see in your head when you read that sentence. I wrote, did the researcher watch them with the stopwatch? Like I the was, track coach? <laughs> I was thinking of something a little more modest. I was thinking I closed the door and he's standing there with a stopwatch. Okay, tell me when you're done. He's doing splits. Yeah. <laughs> he's like clicking the watch. Right. All right. So let's continue here. To empty your bowels just means to poop. Your bowels are, are, are your guts. Right. So it's like empty your, your guts. Your intestines. Yeah. Your large intestine. Okay, let's continue here. It was found that the average time it took while squatting, 51 seconds, was shorter than what was needed on a 42-centimeter high sitting toilet by 79 seconds. That's really going to hold things up if you want to get people cycled through there fast. That's a good point for public toilets, Right. how in sports arenas, this matters. But I think... All of this research and who poops faster misses one important point. It's enjoyable to read on the toilet. I, right. I don't know yeah. about everyone yeah. else, but today we got our cell phones. But pooping on the toilet and reading is actually quite an ancient tradition. In Rome, <laughs> they would actually hand out DMs right in front of the public <laughs> bathrooms. Just like you do in Taipei, you get a little packet of toilet paper and there's like a building or some advertisement. In, I didn't know that. <laughs> in Rome, they would hand you the DM, but it the DM itself was the toilet paper. You read it oh, and then you, you wiped your butt with it. Wipe your butt with it. There we go. That's amazing. <laughs> but they're not really talking about comfort in this piece and I think that's something important that they left out. Yeah, this is this is a whole speed thing and to me it's kind of it's it's almost missing part of the point. A pardon for being gross, but it's sort of like saying, well, we're going to measure how good the meal was by how fast you finish eating it. <laughs> that's true, yeah. You actually want to get it with you don't want to be struggling to get the poop out. But like like Chris said, you know, sitting there and reading a lot of people, I read about people dropping their phones in the toilet all the time because yes. I don't usually carry the, my phone into the toilet. Or if I do, I'm very careful. I have a place to put things down. <laughs> That's right. You, you, you put it out of the way, right? Out of the way. <laughs> That's exactly right. You're, you're purposely placing it where there will be no kind of danger. Oopsies. That's risk. exactly right. Right. That's and right. another thing while we're on the topic that like I kind of discussed yesterday, Going to the bathroom was a family public activity. You mentioned that there were these open toilets where you just sat all facing each other. That's 100% no, in a row, true. In a row. In a row. Yeah. Everybody in, in Roman toilets, for example, were built in rings or circles. You were seeing everybody. There were no stalls. There were no walls. You all did this together and you chatted. It was part of the social fabric. Once you pooped, you went to the public bath. You did these things together. So what time is your meeting? What time is it? Yeah, meeting this and evening. You kind of have people were far more relaxed and casual about going to the bathroom. There was no icky or gross feelings about it. Okay, so seventy nine seconds though that's a really large difference. So that is a big definitely difference. are more comfortable. I think sitting down. All right, let's continue. Studies have also determined that people experience less abdominal strain and discomfort while squatting. Abdominal strain, that means strain in your abdominal muscles. That means your tummy, the muscles in your tummy, the ones that you want to look like a six-pack when you're going to the gym. But the abdominal muscles are one thing. Your leg muscles are another thing. Oh, yeah. Some people simply are not in shape. They don't have the strength to be squatting down on their legs. Or if you are in shape, if anybody here squats, you guys know the day after leg day, your legs are made of jelly. They feel very, very weak because you really stress your your quadriceps. Those are the top parts of your thighs there. And if you're doing heavy squats and then you got to squat to poop, there's a good chance you're going to fall down. That is very <laughs> difficult to do. Even walking or taking the stairs is difficult after leg day. Good point. All right. Our last paragraph. The research findings clearly indicate there are benefits to squatting. Now, this sounds like a persuasive piece of writing. They're trying to convince you that it's better to squat to go poop. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to get handed like an ad for like squatting toilet in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. This is likely due to the fact that the angle created when a person squats allows for a straighter, more direct path for waste to travel 
from the rectum to the anus. And these are kind of taboo words, but you should learn them. So、yeah. rectum is the straight intestine. In Chinese, you call it the straight large intestine, and anus is the circle at the end. It's where, the butthole. It's the butthole. That's right. So you want to have a straight path so it comes through and doesn't have to make a lot of turns. Some even recommend that people who prefer sitting toilets use a stool or some other type of modification to place their feet on to make the angle closer to that of a squat position. Now, <laughs> I don't think it's necessary. In fact, myself, I hundred percent would make fun of my friends if I walked into their house. Let, let's say they don't have kids. If I saw that little steppy stool, I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. So that's like your son or daughter, like using getting up on the toilet. That's very kind of you. Right. But if they didn't have kids and they'd have that step stool in the bathroom, like, what is this? They're like, oh, this is so I can modify my rectum to place it more directly <laughs> over the. I would one hundred percent be making fun of them. <laughs> it depends on how much you need from those friends. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe if you're older and like comfort, all of those things matter. But dude, I'm making fun of you if you have that in your house. I would be careful about that because I have disabled people in my life. Yeah, of course. These are just strictly my goofy friends that are like, you know, we're we're in our thirties and we don't have kids. Everything's on the table for goofy friends, I guess. <laughs> okay. So before we get to those questions, yesterday I teased a story, and I really like this one. I think this is quite a special story. So. Sewers are an everyday part of modern city life, and the first sewers that were built for long-lasting purposes began in the 1860s, and they were built in London at the height of the British Empire. London was just a wash in cash. They had so much money, and they had the problem of the River Thames just being really smelly. Well, why did they have so much money? It's because they were getting lots of cotton to process. Which was being picked by slaves in America and the East India Company in India.、Mm. There were lots of reasons why England was awash in cash, but they had no good way of taking care of the poop, and so they handed this pile of cash to this engineer named Joseph Bazalgette, and then they left town. They said, "You do what you need to do." They gave him almost what's called carte blanche, a blank check to do what you need to do to fix this problem. And call me up when you're done. Yeah, that's exactly right. And he was very ambitious. So he looked at how many people lived in a square mile of London, and then he thought, well, what about the future? More people will continue to live here. And so he made his sewer designs, and he says, well, we're only going to do this once, so let's do a good job. And people thought he was crazy. Like, no, 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 these are far too big. Look how many people live here. And he thought about it, and he said, you know what? You're a hundred percent right. Then he doubled the doubled size the of the size. sewers. Doubled the size. That's right. That's right. There's over two、yeah. thousand kilometers worth of brick tunnels, and they're double in width that he originally planned because he said there will probably be these unforeseen, unforeseen things that happen in the future that will kind of necessitate bigger sewers. I love that when people think about the future like that. Now let's think about the change here. What was the change? When he planned and designed these structures. No building was taller than a few floors high. There were no skyscrapers in the world. He anticipated the invention of extremely tall, strong buildings that would take the number of people that could fit into a square kilometer and exploded. E- exploded. And so today, even today, they still use these original brick sewers when cities all around the world. Built smaller sewers and then had to tear their whole cities up and redo it. It is an incredible achievement. We don't really think about it, but boy, if you live in London, every day that you go to the toilet and it's clean and no problem, we should be thanking Mr. Joseph Bazalgette. We really have a problem with underground piping and sewers in America, and we have it in Taiwan. Both. Yeah. People were not forward-looking enough. We're going to go answer some questions now about this article. Number one, in what order is the information about toilets of different cultures organized in the Day One passage? We have A in order of time, which is the correct answer. B is by cause and effect. No. C from the west to the east. No. D with a problem solution organization. No. They follow a timeline. Number two, please complete the form with the information contained in the day one passage. And here we have a table for you 
In the left-hand column, it says the earliest toilets and flush toilets. So it's divided up into two rows, and you have to fill in the blanks. And the whole, the title of the whole thing is toilet evolution. So for the earliest toilets, it says they were invented by, and the answer is a the Mesopotamians, which is the the description of people from Mesopotamia. And number two, they were brick chairs positioned above a place in which. B human waste was held, and those were sitting toilets, not squatting toilets. Man, those Mesopotamians were smart. And they also coated it with water repellent material. Next is flush toilets. The first,、uh, the first item where we have to fill in the blanks is when the first model was created. People didn't use it, but opted for C chamber pots. What a dumb idea! They should have started <laughs> much earlier. And our last item in this section. This is number two. Who helped popularize the use of flush toilets? This is item number D of question two. Well, letter D is Alexander Cumming helped popularize the use of flush toilets. Number three, please fill in the blanks with the information about the Israeli researcher's study. And let's just go ahead and read. On average, bowel movements on squat toilets took the participants fifty-one seconds while they spent. 130 seconds using sitting ones. Note that bowel movements is still a common way of calling it, calling pooping, and we often shorten it to BMs. Oh, I have to, you know, I have to make a BM. All right, and our last question, number four, and there's a little controversy here. We're going to discuss it in a minute. Some sentences in the day two passage are numbered one through six. Please write down the two numbers that point out why squatting is better than sitting. All right, you can only give two answers. Well, our answers are number three, and let's read number three. Three says studies have also determined that people experience less abdominal strain and discomfort while squatting. That's one reason why stoop toilets are better. And number five, and number five says this is likely due to the fact that the angle created when a person squats allows for a straighter, more direct path for waste to travel from the rectum. To the anus. That's it for today. You know, do some more research. This is a fascinating topic. We didn't get to hear all of Chris's stories, unfortunately. There's never enough time. I was happy to share the ones we did. I hope you guys liked them. I really do like this topic. You'll find plenty more online. That's it for today. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.